This is the third of four videos for the case study of London. The other three parts are linked in the description. In this video we will explore the challenges of London. Urban deprivation describes the degree to which a person or a community lacks the things needed to have a good quality of life, for example, job opportunities. London is a very unequal city, home to billionaires, whilst over 2 million of its residents live in poverty. The poorest people in the city struggle to afford the high costs of many necessities in London, particularly housing, worsening their quality of life. Many areas also suffer from urban decline, which is the deterioration of parts of the city. This is often due to a lack of investment or maintenance and is demonstrated clearly with deindustrialization, which can create a cycle of urban decline. Deindustrialization causes businesses to shut down or relocate, leaving industrial buildings empty and forcing many people out of their jobs. This has several effects. People become stressed, which lowers their aspirations. This results in a less skilled workforce which lowers investor confidence in the area. These people also have less money to spend. Higher skilled workers will leave the area in search of better jobs. This leaves their homes abandoned and causes a decline in population. As there are fewer and poorer people, shops receive less income, which can force them to close as well. This also lowers investor confidence in the area. On top of this, both homes and industrial buildings are left abandoned, often resulting in lots of vandalism and fly tipping, which worsens the reputation of an area, again lowering investor confidence. This loss of investor confidence in the area starts the cycle again, causing more deindustrialization. As mentioned, London has major inequalities across the city. London has the most expensive housing in the country, with an average price of around £520,000 in March 2022, compared to around £280,000 nationally. The Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea is home to some of the most expensive houses in the world, with many properties going for millions of pounds. This is a stark contrast to poorer areas of London. In Newham, the majority of people live in small rented accommodation, typically poor quality flats. School performance is unequal across the city, with the poorest areas receiving lower GCSE grades, and students in Kensington and Chelsea are four times more likely to go to university. Health is also better in the wealthier areas of the city. Life expectancy in Kensington and Chelsea is around 84 for males and 87 for females, compared to just 78 for males and 83 for females in Newham. There are large disparities in employment, earnings vary across the city, and the unemployment rate in Kensington and Chelsea is just 3.9%, compared to 9.4% in Newham. London's population continues to grow by around 100,000 people every year, meaning there is a large demand for new houses to be built. This causes the city to grow outwards into the rural urban fringe, which is the area at the edges of the city. This growth is known as urban sprawl and causes problems such as increased traffic, pollution and loss of greenbelt land. There are restrictions on building on greenbelt land, which pushes many people to move to villages and towns just outside of the city and commute into work. These are known as commuter settlements. This similarly increases traffic in these areas and also causes house prices to rise significantly. An alternative approach to building outwards from the city is looking at areas inside that can be redeveloped. There are two types of site that can be built on. Greenfield sites have not been previously developed and essentially act as a blank canvas to build from. Brownfield sites are previously occupied sites that have fallen out of use, for example, old industrial buildings that now lay derelict. Greenfield sites have many positives for building. Planning is easier and there are no cleanup costs. However, this of course comes at a cost. The rural landscape is lost, which can anger local residents and is harmful to local wildlife. Brownfield sites are more sustainable and help to prevent urban sprawl. And these sites are often closer to attractions within the city, such as shops or places of employment. However, cleanup costs are greater and these areas can be seen as less desirable. The final challenge for this video is waste disposal. As a huge city, London naturally produces huge amounts of waste. This is disposed of in several ways, recycling, incineration and landfill. Landfill is hugely damaging for the environment. For example, it contributes to greenhouse gas emissions with methane. 99,000 metric tonnes of waste went to landfill from the city in 2020. However, the city is aiming to achieve a recycling rate of 65% 
and send zero waste to landfill by 2030.